Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning. Welcome. I'm going to let Martha Ophir go ahead and kickstart us into our uh, webcast. Hi, everyone. My name is Martha Ophir. I'm the marketing manager here at Kravitz. Thank you very much for joining us today. This turned out to be an incredibly popular webcast. We have over 600 people registered. And we uh, that just goes to show what an innovative and cutting edge topic this is. Again, it's not something a lot of people are aware of. Um, we're very excited to bring you the material today with two of the nation's leading experts on this topic. Um, before I introduce your speakers for today, Dan Kravitz and Chris Pittman, I'm just going to give you, uh, just quickly go over the housekeeping items. In your GoToWebinar control panel, under the handouts section, we have uh, today's presentation in a PDF handout format, so you can take some notes or review it at your leisure. And we also have a legal opinion on the legality of this process that our Kravitz uh, ERISA attorney produced um, that you can also review. You have a question box where you can ask us any questions. If we do have time at the end, we're going to take some of those. Um, if it's specific to your particular case, we'll connect with you offline. And if we don't have time for questions, again, we will definitely uh, reach out to you afterwards. And today's webinar, as we mentioned, is being recorded. And uh, any other questions you have? Oh, and you have two audio options. You have your computer audio and you can also dial in. So if you're having issues with one, I would just suggest trying the other. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce you to Dan Kravitz. Many of you uh, know him or have been on other educational webcasts we've had. Dan is one of the country's top experts on on cash balance plans. He pivoted Kravitz to focus uh, almost singularly on cash balance um, in uh, over 10 years ago. And he's been working on retirement plans in general for uh, 26 years and cash balance plans specifically for at least 15 years. He's the author of the best selling uh, book on cash balance plans beyond the 401k. And he has helped uh, probably over a thousand companies of all types and sizes to implement successful strategically designed cash balance, tax efficient cash, cash balance plans. And Dan uh, today really wanted to bring on to you for your uh, educational enhancement, our leading, uh, one of our leading consultants, Chris Pedman. She is an enrolled actuary and a client relationship specialist. She's worn a number of hats at Kravitz over the past 15 years and has more than 30 years experience in retirement plans. And uh, she has handled or walked clients through uh, approximately 400 plan terminations of uh, defined benefit and cash balance plans, including a large number of strategic plan terminations, which is what we're going to be discussing today. And that is a, you know, a really specialized uh, niche area that Chris has a lot of expertise on. And I'm sure you'll really enjoy hearing her insights from some actual Kravitz case studies today. And as you may know, Kravitz is uh, you know, the nation's leading cash balance provider and also a very proud member of the Ascensus family. So I'm going to let Dan lead it off with uh, uh, walking you through the agenda and some of our goals for today. Thanks, Martha. Thanks for that riveting introduction. So welcome, everybody, to what plan sponsors and their advisors need to know about strategic uh, plan terminations. If you're not familiar with strategic plan terminations, no worry because one of our learning objectives, particularly if you're a plan sponsor, was to help you learn you know, when a strategic plan termination might make sense and how it works. We'll help you assess the pros and cons of a strategic plan termination versus the benefits and potential savings. Advisors, Chris, will learn what? Uh, the roles and responsibilities of an advisor during the strategic plan termination process and how to determine if a prospect is a good candidate and how to open the conversation. Yeah, you know, for those of you that are financial advisors, I think this is a, I'm really excited that you decided to join us. In fact, most of the attendees are actually financial advisors. This is a great way for you to differentiate yourself, great way to bring a new innovative solution to your clients. You know, so on the agenda, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna seek to understand what a strategic plan termination is. I know, Chris, when we speak to a lot of clients, you know, they're unaware of this opportunity. They don't know it exists. So hopefully people will learn. Chris, what will we do next? 
Oh, and then we're going to go ahead and walk you through the IRS regulations. And there's some concerns that you need to understand. So Chris and I are going to, are going to carefully outline those regulations, uh, explain the concerns. Uh, I'll go through two case studies, uh, as well as procedures, explain how it works. Yeah, and then last but not least, uh, I'll finish off with some con conclusions and some suggestions. Like Martha alluded to, but I just want to say it again, there's handouts um, that you can uh, access through the control panel. In particular, there's a, a legal opinion that we hired an ERISA attorney to provide. If, you're, if, if after listening to this webcast, you decide for your firm or for your client that you're going to take them through a strategic plan termination process, I would encourage you to do two things. Read that handout and then definitely seek um, help from experts in the field, particularly people that have gone through the process before. Uh, strategic terminations add a lot of value and, and definitely could, could be very beneficial, but they're complex. It's one of the more complex, cutting edge uh, uh, things that we do here at Kravitz. So uh, definitely, you know, don't do this on your own. You know, definitely consult with the experts. So first thing, what is a strategic plan termination? Well, it, it's pretty simple. A it's, a, it's a decision by the owners of a company to terminate their existing cash balance plan or traditional defined benefit plan, you know, distribute all the assets, and then sometimes at the same time or immediately thereafter, adopt a brand new cash balance plan, oftentimes with a different design and oftentimes with a different interest crediting rate. So again, they're terminating their existing plan, oftentimes a mature pension plan, and then quickly starting a brand new plan. Now, you gotta be thinking, why would someone go to that hassle of terminating a plan and starting a new one? Well, let's take a look. There's five reasons why companies consider strategic plan termination. Chris, what's the number one reason that we find? Partners want to transfer current cash balance plan assets to their 401k profit sharing plan and or IRAs with the goal of broadening investment options and increasing investment returns. Yeah, no doubt one of the rubs of a cash balance plan is that the assets are pooled and participants cannot self-direct. And we find that um, a lot of the partners of, of companies, a lot of the shareholders, a lot of the participants have a strong desire to self-direct those assets like they're accustomed to doing in their 401k plan. And so although for participants over the age of 62, we can uh, give them access to their accounts or their benefits through an in-service withdrawal. For those participants under the age of 62, there's really no way to get access to those assets unless we have what's called a distributable event. And that's the beauty of a strategic plan termination, is we're creating a distributable event for the participants so they can roll those assets out of the cash balance plan, oftentimes to their 401k plan, oftentimes to an IRA, and self-direct it. So what we find is, um, this is number one because it's the primary motivator. Now you'll hear later why this can't be the, it cannot be the only reason for doing a plan termination. This would, would not sit well with the government, but this is, 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 is the number one motivator. Chris, what's another reason why a lot of plan sponsors uh, do strategic plan terminations? The retirement committee and or plan advisor seeking to reduce potential investment risk for guaranteeing an interest crediting rate on large account balances. Yeah, so, you know, here at Kravitz, we've been administering these plans since 1989. And some of these plans get really mature and grow. You know, they, they, they oftentimes start off with no assets, obviously, and they quickly grow to $5 million, $50 million, you know, $500 million. And when you're guaranteeing an interest crediting rate on that, the owners quickly, you know, get nervous of having that huge liability on their books. So another reason why strategic plan termination is so popular, it, it's a way to get that liabilities, that risk off the employer and shift it back onto the employees by allowing them to self-direct those accounts in their IRAs or, or their 401k plans. Chris, what's another reason? Replace the traditional defined benefit plan with a new cash balance plan, rather than make the defined benefit to cash balance transition through a cumbersome, difficult, 
plan conversion process? Yeah, so there's no doubt that a lot of our clients that have traditional defined benefit plans would like to wind those down and start a cash balance plan. And now, although legally you can convert, you know, change a defined benefit plan into a cash balance plan, do what we call a conversion, the, 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 the roadmap for that is sometimes difficult. And then out on the other side is you have a very complicated program. So we find it easier to simply terminate that traditional defined benefit plan and then go ahead and um, start a brand new cash balance plan. Okay. Uh, number four is desire to redesign plan following a significant growth of the firm or merger or acquisition, changes to partnership structure, and other demographic or design flaw factors. Yeah. So. Thanks, Chris. So what we're typically finding, although a lot of the design changes could be made by amending the existing cash balance plan, when you start to make significant design changes in, an, in a plan and you amend for those, uh, on the other side of that, you have a much more complicated cash balance plan. Oftentimes you have to um, deal with two different benefit formulas. You have things called wear away you have to contend with. So once again, when our clients are making significant design changes like changing um, who's covered, like changing the interest crediting rate, it's easier to terminate the plan and then start up a brand new cash balance plan. And then last but not least, and I kind of alluded to this, is a lot of our clients, particularly our larger clients, are looking to change the interest crediting rate from a safe harbor rate like the 30-year treasury or a fixed rate of four or 5%, to something called actual rate of return or actual rate of return with multiple investment options. And, and that's another way to reduce the risk, get the liability of guaranteeing something like 5% um, off the books. So uh, for again, you could take an existing cash balance plan, amend the interest crediting rate to actual rate of return, but, but then you have a plan that has sort of two different interest crediting rates. Although the old one wears away over time and and, there, and that's a concept called wear away that I won't get into today. Um, that can be difficult to manage, you know, and, and affect your, 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 your monitoring and managing two benefit formulas. So again, in certain situations, it's simply easier to terminate the existing plan um, and then start a brand new cash balance plan where you can then deploy um, that actual rate of return as, as the interest crediting rate. So just to repeat, you know, kind of the immediate advantages for plan sponsors and the reason why a lot of clients um, uh, take advantage of a strategic plan termination and a big motivator is access to those account balances and lump sum benefit um, can be distributed uh, in the form of an annuity cash or a rollover. Uh, the firm is released from further interest liability and principal guarantees. And there's a blank slate for innovative and advanced plan design. Yeah, like I said, sometimes it's easier when you're doing significant design changes rather than amending your existing plan for those changes. Um, simply terminate the plan and start a new one. Yeah, when you when you when you start a brand new cash balance plan, you can take advantage of that and go ahead and um, re um, re engage with the participants to find out you know, what contribution amounts might make sense, um, kind of what well, we use the term survey here at Kravitz, you, you resurvey the participants, and that's a good opportunity uh, to use this, use the plan termination opportunity to change contribution amounts. And in the new plan, the firm can change plan provisions and interest crediting rate. Uh, one of the provisions we always see is, is reducing the normal retirement age, for example, from 65 to 62, and also allowing an in-service withdrawal provision. So at least that can, can be managed in the, in the new plan. Am I right, Chris? The reason why a client might wanna change the normal retirement age from 65 to 62, so you can people can have access to their account balances earlier? Yes, so they can still be an active employee of the company and participant in the plan, but yet at 62, uh, apply for in-service in withdrawal, take their funds, roll it over either to the 401k or an IRA, and then, and then direct the investment from there themselves. Yeah. And the last advantage, and we find this oftentimes when we take over uh, cash balance plans, is there can be potential cost savings in reductions to employer contribution costs, the elimination of audit fees. For those of you who are not aware, if a plan has more than 100 participants, it requires an audit. Uh, and here's how we do this. Oftentimes when we've taken over a lot of mature cash balance plans, 
uh, it was decided for whatever reason um, to cover all the employees in the cash balance plan. So they're covering all the owners as well as all the rank and file employees. And sometimes there was, uh, some, some, for some reason, some clients had thought that they had to do that. Well, that's not the case. We oftentimes do something we like to call carve out designs, where we carve out um, just the owners and shareholders and executives in the cash balance plan, and we cover the rank and file employees in the 401k profit sharing plan. But by doing that, by carving out the rank and file employees from the cash balance plan, we can significantly reduce employer contribution costs. We can eliminate um, that, the, that nasty audit that you might have to go through if you have over 100 participants. And this has been a common phenomenon here at Kravitz. We've been taking over a lot of cash balance plans, terminating those, and then starting a brand new cash balance plan where we simply cover the owners and executives. Of course, legally you have to cover all the employees, but we do that again through the 401k profit sharing plan. If that carve out concept is new to you, that's another innovative plan design that we do quite a bit. Definitely contact myself or Chris or your Kravitz uh, uh, consultant, more than happy to help you understand that. In fact, we've done other webcasts on that topic before. And one other uh, side benefit I've noticed on a couple of plans is if there's a significant amount of liability or benefits in the cash balance plan that's terminating, and you have a lot of active participants, that many of them transfer their benefit to the company's 401k plan, that then adds a significant amount to 401k plan assets. And sometimes it's enough to bump them up to another threshold for uh, 401k fees, where they get reduced uh, fees from the 401k plan. Yeah, no, Chris is absolutely right. Because oftentimes when you're terminating a cash balance plan, uh, most of those assets do end up in the for, in the in the accompanying 401k plan. And then advisors, we're gonna get to advisors in a minute. That's a great opportunity for mm -hmm. advisors to help their clients um, renegotiate their 401k fees. So that often is a that's something we we, we discovered uh, happened behind the scenes after we did a strategic plan termination. So for those of you that are plan advisors, you know the opportunity for you is this is a great way for, for you to differentiate yourself in the marketplace. Uh, you'll be surprised how many advisors and clients are, are not aware uh, of this concept called strategic plan termination. Oftentimes, and we'll get into myths, we're told that this is not legal, you can't do this. Um, that's not true. If, as long as you know what you're doing and you, you follow the steps properly, this can be a great way for an advisor to help a client. And one thing I've noticed that we at Kravitz, we can, we can assure that it's done right and it's done as easy as possible. Uh, but many times to do it well and smartly, uh, it, it only comes through partnering with, with a very good advisor who's you know, willing to, to help a sponsor make this happen. And, and again, do it smartly. Absolutely. Ahead. Yeah, it's, it's a great way for an advisor to help a client replace a traditional defined benefit plan or an outdated cash balance plan with a much better designed uh, cash balance plan that meets their client's objectives. And it's an opportunity, you know, for advisors to advise clients, those, I'm sorry, not the clients, but the participants on those rollovers. So oftentimes the advisor enjoys the fact that as a result of the strategic plan termination, they can re-engage with the participants, help them figure out to, what to do with those cash balance accounts or to find benefits, those benefits in the, in the plan and help them uh, manage those assets. Yeah, many times, um, uh, the advisors want to be the ones to help distribute uh, election form packages. They actually may take the time to meet with participants, help them with their forms, um, may even encourage uh, uh, a good place for IRA rollovers, for example. Yeah, and remember, a lot of these participants in these cash balance plans are usually you know, shareholders of a, of a medical group, a partners of a law firm, and these account balances are pretty significant. They can be upward, you know, upwards of two, three million dollars. So a lot of the advisors are excited to kind of re-engage with the owners of the law firm, uh, the shareholder doctors, and help them uh, 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 with, with, with those rollovers. It's also an opportunity for an advisor to maybe re, have a reset with regards to the investments when they start a brand new cash balance plan, come up with a new investment policy statement. Oftentimes an advisor might be inheriting an investment portfolio from another advisor. By doing a strategic plan termination, we can, we can start a clean slate for them. 
And then last but not least, um, advisors, those of you that are interested in the actual rate of return as the interest crediting rate, um, through strategic plan termination, like I said earlier, this is a great way to help a client out of maybe a, an inappropriate interest crediting rate, maybe fix 5%, might be too risky for your client. So rather than amend the plan, again, do a strategic plan termination, we terminate that plan and start over afresh with a, with a new cash balance plan with actual rate of return. So before we get a little further into how this works and, and what the concerns are, I just want to dispel some myths because you need to under, you need, I need to do some level setting and make sure we're all on the same page. So common myths about pension plans that I hear from prospects and advisors and clients. I've been told you can't replace the traditional defined benefit plan with a cash balance plan. That's not true. I've been told you can't terminate a pension plan, be it cash balance or, or defined benefit, if it's less than five years old, less than 10 years old. Also not true. There's some concerns you have to be aware of and some hoops you have to jump through, no doubt if it's less than 10 years old, and we'll walk you through those. But you definitely can do it and like, uh, Martha said earlier, Chris has worked on hundreds of these. Uh, you can't have two pension plans operating at the same time. That's not true. And the reason why I want to dispel that myth is typically what we find is as you're terminating the existing plan and starting a new plan, there'll, there'll be overlap. They'll be existing at the same time. We'll, we'll, we'll show some timelines later and you'll see that. That's perfectly acceptable. We've heard you can't have a traditional defined benefit plan and a cash balance plan in place at the same time. Not true, because oftentimes when we're doing a strategic plan termination of a defined benefit plan, you know, we'll be terminating that defined benefit plan, starting a brand new cash balance plan because of timing issues, the plan, likely to be overlap where the traditional defined benefit plan is still in operation, being terminated at the same time we're commencing with the uh, implementation of the brand new cash balance plan. So I wanted to dispel those myths before we move on. And so I'm glad I did. And so now let's take you to um, something that I wanna make sure everyone understands clearly and understand you know, the IRS rules behind plan terminations and, I, and understand some concerns that you need to be aware of if you're gonna do a, a strategic plan termination. And again, I'll just remind everybody, um, in, on, the, on your control panel are, is, is a handout and it's a, we hired an ERISA attorney many years ago to come up with a legal opinion uh, on how to navigate some of those rules and some of those concerns. So again, if, if you're, if you're going to take, if you're, if you're going to do this for your company or do this for a client, I would again encourage you to read that handout and feel free to call us if you want us to help you with, 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 with the term, with the strategic plan termination. So first off, when is it acceptable to terminate a cash balance plan? Well, the IRS has very specific rules and guidelines governing when a firm may terminate an existing plan. If these are perceived to be violated, the IRS could disqualify the new plan and or prohibit distributions from the old plan. Yeah, so, so there you can see why we want to make sure you understand you know, how to do this right. So when you look at the IRS rules and regulations and you peel back that onion, there's really three concepts that you want to understand. And that's this concept called permanence. So we'll review that with you. There's the concept of business necessity. Uh, and last but not least, there's something called a few years. <laughs> so, so what does all that mean? Let's, let, let's take a look. So Chris, um, why don't you go ahead? Let's, let's just read uh, verbatim to everyone right straight from the give everyone the IRS guidelines about about this yeah a plan established and maintained by an employer to provide systematically for the payment of definitely determinable determinable benefits to his employees after retirement the term plan implies a permanent as distinguished from a temporary program the abandonment of the plan for any reason other than business necessity within a few years after it has taken effect will be evidence that the plan from its inception was not a bona fide program for the exclusive benefit of employees in general. Okay, so that sounds kind of scary. And let me just kind of, let's peel back that on you. So we need to understand what, what they mean by permanent as opposed to temporary. And we, we'll walk you through how you do that. We also need to understand when you need to prove a business necessity and what that would be. And last but not least, what is a few years? 
Okay, so let's look at this. So first off, a few years. You know, a few years is not clearly defined, but the IRS, um, through revenue rulings and its IRS manual, has clearly stated that they will not question a plan termination if the plan has been around for 10 or more years. So based on our experience doing this for many years, um, I almost feel like it's a safe harbor. If your pension plan is more than 10 years old, I have no problem recommending a strategic plan termination. Let me just pause there and say that again. So a good safe harbor is if your existing pension plan is 10 years old or more, I have no problem suggesting we terminate it and start a brand new cash balance plan if that makes sense for those reasons we reviewed earlier. And we've done that often. We've had a lot of clients hit that 10 year mark and go ahead and terminate their plan and start a new one. And we've been doing that uh, uh, quite a bit uh, these last couple of uh, years here at Kravitz. However, for plans that have been in existence for less than 10 years, um, we need to jump through some additional hoops. The new plan adopted after termination should, should look a little different than the old plan, and we need to make a case for business necessity. Um, I gotta be honest with you, as I've been doing, as Chris and I have been doing this for many years, I've become more and more comfortable um, terminating a cash balance or defined benefit plan that has not been around for 10 years and then starting a new one. We've had a lot of success over the years. It's just that you need to do it right. Um, so first off, what's an example of business necessity? You know, some examples that the IRS gives is like a change of ownership um, after an acquisition or merger, significant reduction in the company's ability to fund a plan. Here's what I've discovered. It's based, and in fact, it says this in the IRS uh, revenue ruling, it's based on facts and circumstances. And this is where I think Kravitz can be really helpful. Chris and I have helped a number of clients uh, do a strategic plan termination for a client whose plan has been around less than 10 years. And we've had 100% success with the IRS in terms of getting an IRS approval letter when we make the case for business necessity. So there's all sorts of examples we can walk you through, but it's based on your individual facts and circumstances. And during our case studies, we're gonna give you two real examples. Another key takeaway, so the key takeaway, I'm, I apologize, is again, if the plan has existed for less than 10 years, we need to make sure the new plan does not look like a direct continuation of the old plan. So we need to make some design changes. And we also need to make the case uh, for, um, for uh, uh, the business necessity. And examples of meaningful differences, you know, covering a different group of employees, uh, uh, changing the interest crediting rate, changing contribution amount, changing the pay credits, change of ownership, lots of different ways to show uh, examples of meaningful differences. Okay, very cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna have uh, Chris walk us through two real life case studies. If you're confused, hopefully this will help bring it home. Right, and I just first want to make a comment that I've worked on over 400 plan terminations since 2013, and no two are exactly alike, but within the strategic plan termination group, there are definitely common themes, right? And a lot of them are, are um, items we've already mentioned. Uh, in this webinar. So we've picked two case studies that uh, kind of are very good examples because they, they have a, some combined reasons for strategically terminating. Okay, case study number one is a large medical group. Uh, Kravitz took over administration of this plan from another TPA. Um, and again, it's a five-year-old plan. Challenges and concerns, well, all 200 employees were included and it became expenses to manage. They had a fixed rate interest crediting rate or ICR of 5% that became difficult to maintain in low interest rate era. And some senior partners wanted to access the assets. Yeah, you know, I actually remember this one. This one's in the Midwest, it's a large medical group in the Midwest. I actually personally went and visited this one. And again, advisors, the client had no idea First off, they had no idea that they had, they assumed they had to cover all 200 employees in the cash balance plan. They were under that myth. And they were really excited to learn that that wasn't the case, that the plan could just cover the owners. 
and also that interest crediting rate of five percent the plan was having problems and the advisor was struggling and uh, meeting that interest crediting rate so they were really looking at in fact they were even thinking of getting rid of the plan um altogether and um you know chris will go ahead and walk you through the solution we came up with and the plan's still in existence today yeah so again this new solution was to create a new plan the new plan design included just 50 participants the non-holder shareholder the non-shareholder positions were carved out so we were just covering the, uh, the the shareholder doctors just the owners yeah and the new plan used actual rate of return instead of the fixed five percent rate reducing most funding issues and simplifying the investment strategy yeah so what's nice about switching to actual rate of return is you don't have that annual underfunding and overfunding issue that you have to contend with when having a fixed rate like uh, 5%. If you're not familiar with actual rate of return, definitely go to our website, cashbalancedesign.com. We have some nice uh, handouts and articles we've written about that uh, interest crediting rate option. And the new plan design demonstrated meaningful differences from the prior plan, thus passing IRS scrutiny, and the terminating plan received that favorable determination letter from the IRS. Okay, why don't you, Chris, walk us through the process? Okay. Uh, well, first, your Kravitz dedicated plan termination consultant uh, creates a uh, tra transition strategy. Sometimes this, this can be as low as about one year, sometimes about two years. In this case, it was about 16 months. There's effective communication with shareholders and staff to explain the process and changes. Yeah, I'll just interrupt Chris for a minute there. That was also the advisor on this plan was excited to partner with uh, the, us as the actuary in terms of helping the owners understand how this was going to work. So that advisor was able to, you know, kind of re-engage with their client. And also when it came time for the rollovers, you know, they definitely were, their shoulder was tapped to help those doctors with the investment needs. And all notification requirements were met in a timely manner. And we'll go over what those notifications are later. Yeah. And our uh, dedicated Kravitz loans and withdrawals team streamlined the process of distributions, including rollovers, um, going to multiple uh, 401k providers, IRAs, and so forth. Yeah. So and you can see that the process, there is a lot to the process. In this example, it took 16 months. You know, definitely, like I said, this is this is not for beginners. This is um, an advanced concept. Um, in fact, you'll notice this case study is a large medical group. And, the, and, and I want to point out that it's large. Oftentimes, strategic plan terminations are typically done by our larger clients because, you know, you need to spread the, the, the administrative cost of doing this over a number of participants for it to make sense. So you know, typically, you know, when we have like a, you know, a 10 life case with one owner and nine employees, you know, this might be too cumbersome and too expensive. But for a large medical group in this example, you know, 50 owners, 150 employees, it was a great solution. Uh, in fact, and in fact, you'll see the next case study. Um, oh, before I get to that, actually, I apologize. I jumped ahead. Chris, why don't you walk us through the results? I was anxious to get to case study right. too. Well, yeah, this is the, one of the most important slides here. Just pointing out the results. First of all, the time-consuming and expensive audit process is eliminated, uh, which generally occurs with plans um, with either over or under 100 participants. So there's no audit requirement here. Employer contribution costs were significantly reduced. Yeah, and that's again because we eliminated covering all the rank and file employees in the cash balance plan. We saved this client uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in annual contribution costs, more than covered the additional you know, cost of terminating the plan. The cost of plan termination mitigated by lower administration costs, lower contribution amounts. Kind of jumped on that yeah. one. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and the client enjoys reduced risk and minimal funding issues with their new actual rate of return interest crediting rate. Yeah, so you know, this is a very happy client. Um, again, I'll just repeat uh, for those of you that are advisors, this client was unaware this was a solution. In fact, we were brought in to really close down the plan mm -hmm. and they were really unhappy with cash balance because of the cost involved, the high interest crediting rate they were contending with. Mm -hmm. And now they're, they're a very happy client today with, with a much more manageable plan. And so case study two, Chris, is a large law firm. Why don't you go ahead and walk us through that one? Yeah. In this case, 
uh, they didn't quite have the 10 years that we think of as a safe harbor time to uh, strategically terminate a plan. They had an eight-year-old plan, um, but it was difficult to maintain. They had two different interest crediting rates, which required keeping track of two different structures, two different kinds of balances, checking for wear away each year. Um, so again, overly complex record keeping. The plan also had about 300 million in assets to manage. So they wanted to reduce liability on the books with burdensome fiduciary requirements such as quarterly reporting. Yeah, the, I remember the owner, the partners of this law firm were thrilled to get that $300 million liability off the books, mm -hmm. let the partners take the money and, and roll it over um, uh, uh, to the 401k plan. And you'll hear a little bit, some of the changes we made to this plan. Again, it wasn't 10 years old, but we were comfortable mm -hmm. terminating and then starting a new plan with less than 10 years because Chris is going to walk us through in a little bit some of the changes we made. Also, I remember this law firm recently acquired a smaller law firm and they wanted to integrate those plan participants. And it was our recommendation not to do it in an existing cash balance plan with those two different interest crediting rates, but to terminate the plan altogether, integrate that new law firm into the new cash balance plan. So what was the solution, Chris? Well, the new plan design used actual rate of return only. So no longer did they need to maintain two separate ICRs. The new plan integrated all participants of the recently acquired firm, and excess assets were transferred to the company's 401k plan per the plan resolution. Just to interrupt you there, Chris, so the plan was overfunded when they terminated it. And I, if I remember correctly, this client had the option to take that overfunding to pay for some fees. Mm -hmm. They also had the choice to either transfer those excess assets to the 401k profit sharing plan to pay for some employer contributions there, or they could have uh, transferred those excess assets to the new cash balance plan. Yeah. So if the plan's overfunded, you know, and we'll get to overfunding and underfunding later and how to deal with that, but if the plan's overfunded, that's not a problem. There's all sorts of different options in terms of how you deal with that overfunding, from increasing benefits in the current plan before you terminate, transferring it to the 401k plan as additional employer contra cover employer contribution costs, mm -hmm. or maybe even transfer it to the new cash balance plan. And the new plan design demonstrated meaningful differences from the prior plan, thus passing IRS scrutiny. And again, the terminating plan received a favorable determination letter. Yeah, I remember this law firm had an ERISA attorney. There was some concern about the fact that the plan had only been around for eight years as opposed to the 10-year mark. But the ERISA attorney and Kravitz were very comfortable walking, taking our client through the process. Um, we got the IRS approval letter, and as you can see here, there's quite a number of meaningful changes that, 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 that we had to deal with, and we felt we met the business necessity because they, they acquired a new firm, which is actually one of the examples uh, that the IRS gives. Um, I got to be honest with you, there's lots of different ways to satisfy the, the meaningful differences for those with less than 10 years, satisfy business necessity. Just work with experts like Kravitz or another firm that has been through this with the IRS before. Like I shared earlier, we're batting 100% um, with, with the IRS whenever we've done this. So again, the process starts with good planning. Um, the Kravitz dedicated plan termination consultant created a 20-month transition strategy. The reason for this is we knew ahead of time there, there would be uh, some things to consider, some issues that the, the, the plan population came with. We'll get into that in a, in, in a couple bullets. But there was effective communication with shareholders and staff to explain the process and changes. Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, we did a meeting for everybody mm -hmm. um, at this law firm. We met with all the shareholders. Um, we did that face-to-face -face, as well as a bunch of webcasts. I think they had offices uh, throughout the country. Um, and again, um, our dedicated loans and withdrawals team, in, in addition to the Kravitz consultants, uh, we provided assistance with some issues regarding qualified domestic relations orders or QDROs for divorce participants. And they had a significant population of um, people who had terminated a while ago. So we, we had heard from them there might be a challenge finding these people, getting required notices and election form packages to them and so forth. So we worked with them on locating these missing participants with balances. 
Yeah, yeah, and we're going to get to some considerations and some cons later. But no doubt, you know, I don't want to sugarcoat it. Um, there's great benefits for doing a strategic plan termination, but there's some work involved. Oftentimes, there's terminated participants that are difficult to find. We'll get into later, you know, helping with those election forms, picking the, the rollover option versus the annuity option and what that means. Um, and last but not least, like Chris said earlier, you know, we have a dedicated loan and withdrawal team, and that's real important to partner with oftentimes the 401k provider. Here again is where the advisor can add value. The advisor can, can help bridge that gap between us as the actuary managing the cash balance plan and the 401k provider who's going to be the receiver a lot of a lot of those rollovers. And by working hand in hand, oftentimes it makes the, the client, life of the client a lot easier. And so the results of this, Chris? Well, the client was very happy with their simplified new plan and integration of the acquired firm's plan participants. Yeah, and, and um, there was a relief. You know, this plan had it was a large plan. It had three hundred million dollars. You know, the fiduciary and, and, and nervousness of the partners of maintaining that liability on the books concerned them. Um, having with, 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 in terms of you know, so the, getting that off the books was a big deal and a big win for this law firm. Uh, many of the partners and shareholders used the the strategic plan termination as an opportunity to change their contribution amounts. So we resurveyed everybody. And last but not least, the plan is a lot easier to administer with only one interest crediting uh, rate, actual rate of return, as opposed to two interest crediting rates where you're dealing with multiple benefits for each participant, as well as this concept called wear away, which we're not going to get into now. Um, and, and then, um, but, but it was a big win for the client. So I, I, those were two excellent case studies. Chris has worked on hundreds of these. Um, no doubt, these are these, these uh, large law firms, large medical groups are, are being are great candidates for this in terms of who we've been helping with strategic plan termination. So now let's look at how it works. Um, go through the steps, timeline, and process. So the first thing we're going to do is Chris is going to walk us through the eight steps to strategic plan termination. Um, the steps of terminating the, the existing plan and then creating the new plan. So this is the first time I'm going to introduce another government agency, the PBGC. We've already talked about the IRS, how important it is to file with the IRS, get their blessing on the uh, termination. Um, plans in general, plans that benefit more than 25 participants, which is usually this strategic plan term group, uh, will be covered by the PBGC, okay? Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. So they have another set of notice requirements, timing, and, and so forth. Okay, so our, our process starts with step one, creating that PBGC notice uh, and having it sent to all participants with the benefit at least 60 days in advance of the termination date. Yeah, so if your plan's covered by the PBGC, and a lot of our larger clients are covered by the PBGC, there's some extra steps you have to jump through. If you're fortunate enough that you're not covered by the PBGC, then the process is a little simpler. Right. Next step is actually creating that board action and plan amendment that actually terminates the plan and sending it to the sponsor to be signed. And that's got to be signed before the plan termination yes. date. Mm -hmm. And step three, uh, this is where the advisor can play a key role. Right about either right before or right after the plan terminates, it's important to regroup and look at the allocation strategy to hedge and reduce fluctuation of plan assets. Yeah, if the plans, if we don't want the plan to go through this process and suddenly be underfunded right. because of the because of maybe a volatility in the market. So that's where the advisor can play a significant role. And two two. Uh, key elements here with step three is what is the funded status of the plan at this time? Are there excess assets right now? Um, is there an underfunding right now? And how to plan for that? And the other item is what did the sponsor elect to wait for the IRS letter or not? Because that will determine the time horizon. Do you need to anticipate distributing benefits in about four to six months? Or is it more like a year and a half down the road? And you'll hear later, uh, back when we first started doing this, we encouraged a lot of our clients to wait till you got that letter to distribute assets. That's not true anymore. We, we now find it's, it, we are oftentimes are allowing our clients to distribute those assets and not wait for the IRS approval letter. We're, we're very comfortable doing that. Step five, Chris? Uh, well, we, oh, step, 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 step four. Five. Step four was just submitting determination to both the IRS and the PBGC for their review. 
Um, step five is once approved, once, uh, then uh, typically assets are distributed to participants. And the next three steps are with respect to the new plan, uh, a new survey for level of benefits is to be provided to the company in the new plan. Uh, and the new plan design and investment strategy is reviewed and approved by committee. Again, this ties to what the new ICR will be. And then step eight, the actual plan adoption and yeah. submitting to the IRS for a review. Yeah, so that was a nice simplified version of the steps we have. You definitely, if you go through the process with us, we'll, we'll get into more detail with you, but I think it gives you a good highlight. You know, in terms of ideal timing, Chris, what is the best timing for a plan termination? Uh, I, I like the last day of the plan year. It's easy to plan for. It's something that historically has happened each year where you receive an annual census, you do your regular annual compliance testing and prepare an annual journal. Um, and then uh, to have that be your final year of plan year benefits in the terminating plan. Very nice, Chris. And then, you know, due to the length of time it takes to get that IRS later, letter, um, and some of our clients do wait, you know, that can extend the timeline quite a bit. So instead of being a 12 month process, you know, an eight to 12 month process, it can be a 20 to 24 month process. So for that reason, you know, oftentimes what we're doing is we're not waiting for that letter to start the new plan, nor to distribute the assets of the old plan. In fact, you know, this is a good pick. I'm not going to walk, we're not going to walk everyone through this. We don't have time. But if you compare, you know, uh, uh, terminating a PBTC covered plan, waiting for the IRS letter versus not waiting, you know, what we find is by not waiting, if you start the process, let's say, in uh, November, the end of 2018, you can be all done with all the steps by the end of 2019. So in this example, we got it done in about a year. But look, if you do have to wait, you know, then we go into 2020 before we finish the process. So it adds another year to the process. So, you know, when we first started doing strategic plan terminations, we would encourage our clients to wait for that IRS favorable determination letter. You know, again, we consult with your ERISA attorney, but we're comfortable not waiting, distributing the asset, starting the new plan, and then subsequently we'll get the IRS favorable determination letter for both the termination and new plan. Yeah, so when, when you're thinking of terminating the plan, it's important to talk to your Kravitz consultant or, or any consultant who handles terminations uh, just to see if the, the plan you're terminating has any issues. Um, are there, you know, is there an extreme shortfall or extreme excess or is there a controversial uh, plan design element that you really want the IRS to, to approve before distributing assets? So there's Still could be a reason why you'd want to wait. Another I've seen is uh, the sponsors have lots, of, there are lots of excess assets. So they're planning on distributing them to participants anyway. They don't, they don't mind. They don't mind waiting and guaranteeing that interest crediting rate. Yeah. So let's go look at some of the challenges and considerations. So, uh, you know, a big challenge is, you know, as you may or may not know, when you distribute assets in a pension plan, uh, the, the default option is not taking a rollover or getting the money in cash. It's an annuity. And 99% of the participants oftentimes will waive the right to the annuity. If they're married, their spouse has to sign off on that as well um, and then take the rollover or cash. But if one of the participants was to choose the purchasing of an annuity, and oftentimes the, the example where I typically see where that happens is a, 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 a participant's going through a divorce and they can't get their spouse to agree to waiving the rights to the annuity, then you have to go through the process of, of purchasing annuities. Uh, on behalf of those terminated participants. And because of the low interest rate environment we're in today, that can be expensive. So um, we've helped, usually when we're terminating a plan, we just terminated a, a, a large medical group with 900 participants. I believe we had to purchase about five or six annuities. So we helped the client and the advisor helped the client manage that process, but there was some additional cost as a result of that. You know, due to the cost involved in strategic plan termination, like I said earlier, you know, this option works best for our larger, mid-sized to larger plans. We have seen it come down market a little bit, you know, but if I, if, if, if the plan has 10 owners or more benefiting in the plan, then likely this could add value. But if it's only one or two owners, um, oftentimes I find the cost of starting a new plan, cost of terminating existing plan, probably overwhelms the benefit. 
and like Chris alluded to, um, we, we, if the plan is covered by PVGC, there's some additional steps and costs involved. Um, Chris, if the plan is underfunded, I know Chris has had to help a lot of clients through this, then I believe you need to fully fund the plan. So you might have to make a final contribution to yes. fully fund it before you distribute assets. Yes, if there are no majority owners, which usually is the case, then then the uh, the company needs to fully fund the plan. And which the majority owners, this one owns more than 51% of the plan, Correct. his benefit or her benefit doesn't need to be fully funded. And Chris walked us through the process here at Kravitz, but no doubt HR or someone at the company has to partner with us and the advisor to collect all those election forms, explain it to the terminated participants. Again, this is where the financial advisor can be helpful and add value, and usually those advisors want to help. Um, if you wait for that IRS letter, then the process can be up to, you know, sometimes 18 months or more. And if the plan has poor performance uh, during the process, then um, potentially it could, it could go from being fully funded to underfunded and then suddenly have to make an excess contribution. In fact, here's something that I want you to understand that most people are completely unaware of. And one thing that happens when you terminate a plan, the interest crediting rate automatically changes. What do I mean by that? Well, what happens is a different interest rate guarantee is in place during what we call the distribution window. That's the period between the date of plan termination and the date you distribute the assets. So let's take a look. Let's say we have a plan this year that wants to terminate their plan as of the end of the year on 1231. So the plan termination date is 1231, 2018. But let's say we distribute the assets um, by November 15th. 2019. During that 11-month window, that distribution window, the interest crediting rate changes. It's no longer the interest crediting rate in 2018, but it's the interest crediting rate um, based on the five-year average. Now, Chris, I know we define the five-year average one way here at Kravitz. How do we do that? Yeah, we base it on plan years. So, for example, in this example, we would base it on the numerical average from years 2014 through 2018. Some other uh, TPAs out there may use a 60 year average, but 60 months, you mean. a 60 month average, but we prefer doing it on plan years because then once January comes around, we definitely know what the average is used to project benefit out, benefits out. So, it's something that um, we can use in our projections and plan accordingly with what investment return has to be and whether there are excess or assets or a shortfall. Yeah, and I guarantee you, Chris, most plan sponsors, most advisors are unaware of this. So we want to point this out on the front end when we're helping a client through strategic plan termination. They might think their interest crediting rate is 4%, but no, it's not 4%, it's the five-year average. And if that interest crediting rate has changed, over that five-year period, then it could be higher than 4% or lower than 4%. If the plan is an actual rate of return plan that's going through this process, then I believe it's one of the IRS published rates, the second segment right. rate. So that's, that's the other um, not so clear part is that you would think with an actual rate of return plan, you do whatever the actual rate of return was for the prior five years, but that's not so. The IRS actually requires a mandated uh, a second segment rate that appears on their table. So it's, so it's different. It's more tied to what the 30 year treasury rates have been over the last five years instead of the plan specific return. And so that's the five year average of that second yeah. segment rate, right, Chris? The good news is we haven't done a lot of strategic plan terminations for actual rate of return plans. Oftentimes mm -hmm. we're helping a client out of a, out of a 30 year treasury rate or a fixed rate mm -hmm. into actual rate of return. Now, I know we did that kind of fast and I was watching the time. I know we're running close to the end, but I wanted to go over some conclusions and some suggestions. Um, so some conclusions, you know, for the right client, like our case studies, you know, strategic plan termination is a great game changer. We've seen a lot of clients and advisors really unhappy with their defined benefit plan or cash balance plan. We take them through this process. Um, definitely there's some work involved, but on the back end of it, we have a much happier client with a much better design plan. You know, if you handle this effectively, and strategically, you can reduce costs, you can uh, lower risk, you can improve client satisfaction. And in all cases, proceed with caution and work with a skilled, experienced PPA partner who has deep knowledge of IRS rules and processes. Yeah, so three tips for plan sponsors, um, and I think Chris alluded to this, make sure you're working with an expert. 
um, that can help you assess the pros and cons of strategic plan termination. It's not for everybody, um, particularly when I look at a, the size of a client, the smaller plans that we see a lot of, it probably is too costly and too cumbersome you know, for, for a client with one or two owners, as opposed to maybe a company with 10 owners who work, work great. Um, you know, definitely a great opportunity to resurvey the owners. Um, I'm sorry, we take a step back. Oftentimes what we do is we find out, we resurvey the partners or shareholders about their plan satisfaction. Often we find out what they're unhappy about with that design, and then we can partner with the client to redesign the plan to better satisfy the participants. And lastly, consistent, timely participant communication is key to a successful process. And uh, create timelines and seek input on the process. Yeah, four key takeaways for those of you that are financial advisors. You know, most plan sponsors don't know anything about this. So this can be a great way for you to differentiate yourself and add value. I guarantee you that um, if you talk to a plan sponsor, 90% of them are unaware they can do a strategic plan termination. Heck, they don't even think they can terminate their plan because they don't think it's been around long enough. Not true. So definitely advisors, this is a great way for you to add value, differentiate yourself. It's a great, you know, com we can, a great way to start a conversation about a client satisfaction with their plan. Um, great way to launch into discussing investments. Um, you know, definitely be cautious about promising results. Definitely make sure you're talking to us or another third party administrator to, to make sure this is a good fit. This is not for everyone, but no doubt adding strategic plan uh, termination to your toolkit being a great way for, for, for advisors um, to better service their clients. Chris, what, what are some next steps that people might want to take? Well, for current Kravitz clients, meet with your Kravitz consultant to review goals, benefits, potential challenges. Um, plan sponsors not currently working with Kravitz, feel free to reach out for us for a free uh, phone consultation. You can go to our website, uh, kravitzinc.com or cashbalancedesign.com to uh, find out who your local Kravitz sales consultant is. We have uh, Kravitz uh, cash balance experts throughout the country that can assist you. You know, advisors, definitely reach out to us. Um, if you're a financial advisor, I would encourage you, if you're, if you're somewhat new to cash balance, you might wanna consider reading our book, Beyond the 401k. Guarantee you it's a riveting book, and um, I know you can read it in two hours. Uh, or our cash balance coach program, a four hour training program for financial advisors where we teach you how to grow your 401k business and cash balance business. Um, so it looks like we took the full hour, of course. What we, we, got, we have a lot of questions, so here's what we're gonna do. I have two minutes. There's no way I'm gonna be able to answer all the questions. If Martha is still there, Martha, maybe you can explain how we're gonna handle all these questions. Hi everyone, thank you so much for staying with us and I hope you all learned a lot today. We have a few dozen questions. The, as I said before we started, the ones that pertain to your specific case situations or, or specific client questions, we're gonna help you out offline. What I'll do right now really quick, since Dan has a few minutes, um, I'm gonna just cluster some of these general topics. Uh, a few of you asked about plans that are, are approaching full funding or are, are um, either a DB or a CB plan that is almost fully funded, can you terminate that and start another separate plan? Um, that yeah. came up a number of times. Yeah, so I think I know where they're going with this. Yeah, so if you're hitting what are called your 415 limits, um, and you, you sort of, and your, and your client has maxed out their cash balance account or defined benefit limit, unfortunately, you can't terminate that plan and start all over again at the same company. Now, on the other hand, if, if you terminate that plan and you were to uh, start another pension plan at a different company that's not part of a control group or affiliated service group with that company, then the answer is yes. But I think if I know where you're going with this, the answer is no. Unfortunately, you you know the the limit is roughly we've got 2.8 million dollars. I think about 2.8 million dollar lump sum at age 62, and once you hit that, you kind of hit your lifetime uh, limit, and you're fully funded. Congratulations, you saved a lot for retirement. Uh, the strategic plan termination won't solve that problem. Another question that came up was, um, do, do similar strategies and approaches apply to a defined contribution plan that you would want to terminate? Or is that that's a different game? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, you know, you kind of stumped me there for a minute. I'm just trying to think. There, I'll, I'll give you yeah. 
I thought. And before Chris jumps okay. in, I just know there are some things called 401k successor rules that if you do terminate a 401k plan, you actually have to wait 12 months before starting another 401k plan. Again, the IRS is trying to prevent people from using this as a strategy really to get access to those 401k assets before legally you can. With regards to profit sharing plans and money purchase plans, Chris, do you have any thoughts? Uh, no, other than those plans weren't designed with, with being permanent in mind. So I think they'd be exempt from that kind of rule. And again, we, we're batting a thousand here. So we've terminated all kinds of plans, including profit sharing 401ks, and there's never been an issue. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm trying to say I apologize for that. Was a, whoever asked that, that was a really yeah. good question. But usually these strategic plan terminations revolve around pension plans. And with 401k plans, you really, you can't start, you, my understanding is I'm not a 401k expert like I used to be, I'm mostly focusing on cash balance nowadays. But I remember those 401k successor rules where you have to wait 12 months before you can even start another 401k plan. Anything else, Martha, before we close out? Uh, someone did just want to clarify, there is no waiting period when you terminate a cash balance or DB plan before opening the new plan. That's correct, right? Cool. Correct. There's no waiting period. In fact, oftentimes, and I'll repeat this, what we're doing is we have two trains going down two different tracks. The termination of the existing plan is usually going on at the same time we're implementing the new cash balance plan, and they'll overlap. And there is no waiting period. So during the current year, we might be terminating a cash balance plan and installing a brand new cash balance plan. Perfect. And then I, I think you might have addressed this already, but um, a couple of people mentioned that issue of the, the expense of purchasing annuities and how do we handle that and how often do people ask for an annuity? Yeah, so definitely that is an issue. And I, I got to be honest with you, almost no participants typically want the annuity when they see, when they get their election forms and they have the option of, you know, getting a lump sum of $200,000 or $2 million that, and then self-direct that with their financial advisor. Nine times out of 10, that's the decision. Where the annuity typically gets selected is that example I gave you. That really happens oftentimes. Uh, participants going through a nasty divorce and their spouse won't sign off on agreeing to waiving the annuity. And then we, we typically partner with the financial advisor. We contact a few insurance companies and we work with the insurance companies to um, underwrite those annuities. And to be truthful, because of the interest rate climate we're in today, likely there's going to be an extra expense um, in order to um, purchase those annuities. Um, and to be honest with you, it's even hard to get those insurance companies to underwrite these if, we, if there isn't enough of them for it to be worth the while the insurance company. So we even seen some clients and some advisors go back to that participant, make sure they understand the annuity option they're selecting. Um, and, and sometimes the participants, sometimes I, even, I remember a client where the participant just checked the wrong box. And so it turned out they didn't want the annuity. So, um, but I would say 90% of the time, we're not contending with annuities, we're doing rollovers, lump sum rollovers. Great. That's all the time we have today, everyone. Um, again, we do have some of these unanswered questions or some technical issues and, and concerns about your particular clients that we'll definitely be happy to help you out with. And once again, uh, we're really glad that all of you took an interest in this, this exciting topic. It's quite an innovative new approach that we've been seeing a lot of developing interest in, and uh, we're excited to uh, work on it with you and um, really share our expertise with you in any way we can. And look out for further emails from Kravitz on some upcoming webcasts on uh, some new issues that may be coming up related to tax reform and then our annual cash balance outlook uh, webcast coming up in September. And uh, Cash Balance Coach is always available for continuing training. Thank you, all, everyone, for your interest and your partnership. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Great. Thanks, Martha. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everybody.